and Joe, welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us here on iBrand Daybreak. And it's time for Personal Finance with Charles Fakura. And today, we're looking at money and your mindset. And guess what? Charles came today wearing his uniform. Charles, what's going on? Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Uh, morning, uh, Uche. And of course, morning, uh, Joshua. I think I'm correct. Yes, Mr. Yes, um, I had to be on this regalia because... Um, this week, there's a lot of activities for our newly qualified traders, and they've undergone some intensive training. So, by Wednesday, they will be putting on, we'll be robbing them with this. So, I have to start um, the process, you know, but the celebration has started. So, yeah, it's a very significant um, activity for them and, of course, for their family members, because when you put on this robe, it tells you that, yes, you are ready to take on the world in terms of your integrity, in terms of your ethics, when it comes to the profession of trading, investment, and of course, uh, stockbroking. Mm, nice. All right, let's bring it home to the topic for today, money and your mindset. Yes, you see, when we talk about money, people just look at money and say, money is a physical item. It's a medium of exchange and all that. But money goes beyond that. But when we are talking of money and your mindset, we are saying changing your beliefs about money. And if we want to move forward, let me even correct an impression. In Nigeria, we say, okay, how do we move forward now? There is no way we can move forward when we are in the, right, in the wrong direction. You have to reverse, detour, follow the right path before you can move forward. So your mindset is not just only your money mindset. Your mindset in other aspects of your life is very key for any meaningful progress but for today in personal finance we are looking at your money and your mindset you know we are in that um, part of the year now where we want to transit to a new year people have started doing so many funny funny things you know just for them to survive and then um, celebrate the merriment and all that but we are saying this is an opportunity for you to step back and begin to say wait what is the mindset what are my beliefs about money how do i relate with money do i am i at peace with money do i have an abundance mindset or a scarcity mindset when it comes to money you know we need to begin to ask ourselves those questions what is our core belief about money how do you manage your debts are you those people who say no i'm not going close to debt or you say yes i can take debt and as long as i make use of the money in the proper way i can generate so much money and of course pay back how do i spend how do i save how do i do an investment all these make up your money mindset of course some of these beliefs will have been shaped from your childhood you know if, uh, if children who grew up in house where they'll tell you do you think money grows on the tree do you think i pluck money you are now sounding that scarcity mentality to the child and the child grows up to become an adult and that same child who is an adult now is also you know transforming the same thing to his or her own children you know how i suffered my parents you know and all that you are creating that scarcity mentality so there are tests we we'll do to our clients when they come to us for us to know whether they have an abundance mindset when it comes to money or a scarcity mindset. if you're always complaining about money one and you're not sure of your financial future. These are signs to know that you have a scarcity mindset. And when people make money, you see people who are really, you know, living your dream, you get envious. That shows that you have a scarcity mindset. Because if you have an abundance mindset, you will know that the creator who has designed this planet for us has given us everything in abundance. Everything in abundance. No child or no human being should go hungry on this planet because there is abundance of all the resources that we need to take care of ourselves. It's the humankind, the human beings, me and you, that have created a kind of distortion in the flow of money. Our greed, yes, and our we are self-centered. So there should be no issue of less developed country a developed country, a poor nation. These, of course, at one time, they told us Nigeria is the perfect. 
poverty capital of the world is not supposed to be like that. This wall has been designed originally is to create abundance. Because you just go, you dig the soil, you are seeing uh, oil that is creating billions and billions of petrodollar. You go, you see lithium, you see gold, and look at the human resources. So it's just for we as human beings to remove greed and remove fear, then begin to change our mindset towards uh, money. Then we begin to attract this money that we need to make this planet, this earth, a very wonderful place for all of us to uh. live. Hmm. All right, when you say that the world is supposed to be living in abundance, yes. how do you how do you then describe, you know, people who work really hard, you know, make all the right decisions yes. and yet they are in luck? I agree with you. I used to work for a boss who would tell you work smartly, not hard. If you used to work hard, you know, I don't know the Yoruba word for it. The people who work in uh, Lagos Island, they will carry load. Mm. Alabaru, that's the local word for them. They work so hard in carrying, but at the end of the day, they still lack. You know, I did. I also did add when I said work really hard and make all the right decisions. Okay. And yet they are still in luck. Good. That's a very interesting question. That's from you now. You're mm. looking at them. You're observing them. They work hard. If I let them say they even work smartly too, they make all the right decisions, but yet they still lack. Now, the issue is within them because you need to clear yourself. You need to be positive in terms of attracting the right condition, the right people, the right connection for you to click and you make that money. It's as simple as that. You know, money is an energy. And I've said here, money... It is spiritual. And when you are looking at money, don't look at it, that physical coin or paper that you see. It's an energy. And like every other energy, it flows. So if within you, you always you have these negative tendencies, of course. You might not know yourself. You'll be attracting negative tendencies. Have you noticed that when you wake up in the morning at times, you are not happy from the home there, things will now start, you start experiencing negative things. But there are days when you wake up, you are excited, you are happy because of life, you know, and all that. And assuring you, when you go out, you begin to attract circumstances, people that will make your day a very memorable world. So we have to look within ourselves. Those persons who make that kind of decisions, they work right, they do things well, at the end of the day, they still lack. They should look within and see how they can clear their energy pathways and begin to think positive. That's where the mindset comes in. You know, again, if you come to me for therapy, when it, in terms of um, your financial issues, there are certain questions we'll ask you, there are certain things we'll tell you to do, certain exercises you will do, you will clear yourself of that negative energy and you begin to attract that positive energy. Whether we like it or not, money is physical, but at the same time, it has the spiritual dimension. All right. Um, you, you spoke about uh, individuals who sometimes, maybe, you know, sub subconsciously say yes. to their children, did I grow money on the tree? Is money picked <laughs> on the road and yes. all that? It might, it might, to me, it might not mean that um, they have a scarcity mentality. It might just mean that they are trying to teach these children on how you know, difficult it is to be able to work for money. Mm. Like people usually say, at least I have somebody whom I can say as a mentor who has always told me there is no magic money. Mm. You know, it, it, it goes beyond merely saying amen to a prayer yeah. about money. Money comes when there is a delivering of value. Yes, exchange. And that value must be appreciated of course. and rewarded. Exactly. That's when you get money. Yeah. So if a child sits before the father and is making demands and mm. the father says, do you think I grow money on the tree? <laughs> do you think I pick money on the road? <laughs> is that child not being helped to appreciate the fact that you must be able to put in value Yes, before I agree you with get you. money? Is Tell that a scarcity mentality? One, if you look at it very well, the, that 
adult or that parent, one is afraid that money that they have is not enough. But if you have a abundance mentality, you believe that for now you might be broke. But because of the universal principles of law of attraction, of money, once you do this, this will come. It's just like when you take the main seed, you plant it, three, four seeds, you water it. That's the work we are talking about now. You water it, you nourish it, and when it grows, it blossoms, it's going to produce a lot of um, maize cob. Not that your three or four seeds that you produce. That is the work we are saying. So for that adult, you should not be using that as a mantra to let your child believe that you have to work so hard for money. In fact, if you love your job, you will never work a day. Say it again. If you love your job, you will never work a day. Because you will see coming to your office as you are coming to express yourself. Money for now is not the issue. But because you want to express yourself and you come to your place of work, you are happy. In fact, on the Sunday evening, you are preparing your things, you are happy. But what do we have today? When it gets to Sunday, most people are not happy. <laughs> they only come here to work on the Monday. So, and that's why we keep telling people that love your job, the money will follow. You know, but if you keep pursuing money, pursuing money, pursuing everything, money, 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 you are making the right decision, you are working hard, you are working smartly. Money will always just begin to leave you. So, you need to create that enabling environment to attract money. I'll give you a practical example. I, I've, I've given you several times before. Somebody was saying he wants to increase his income. He wants to have another alternative uh, source of income, you know? And he didn't know what he was going to do. But he said, ah, I, I, I speak correct English. I talk a lot. Okay. So he was just thinking of what to do. He didn't even know what to do. He said, not up to a day or two, he got a call and said, ah, we know that you speak very well. Can you come and and call this event for us. He never planned to be an MC, nothing. And of course, when he got there, just to anchor an event between the hours of 10 a.m. to about 12.30. And he was surprised when they asked him, ah, what is your bill? For him, he was playing. He was enjoying himself, you know? Because he was just talking. And at the end of the day, he said, the job he's doing <laughs> that day for 30 days, he was able to get three times that amount for just mere living out his passion, talking, and current event between the hours of 10.30 or 10 till about 12.30. So you can see. Are you going to tell me it's by his hard work or he's been working smartly? It is by looking at the laws of nature, the laws of sowing and reaping, the law of attraction. And that is how you are going to attract that condition for him to improve or increase his income. So it, that's why we say it's a spiritual thing. Making money is a spiritual thing. And most of the celebrated entrepreneurs today, what are their investors? Uh, even in Nigeria, you have the Aliko Dangote, Tony Limelu. If you go outside the country, uh, Jeff Bezos, or what's his name? Uh, what do you call Warren that Bush. one? Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. And that's what that Microsoft man, what's his name again? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. If you look at them, you will see humility in them. If you look at them, you will see simplicity in them. If you look at them, you see, forget what the media is glamorizing, that that is wealth. No, that is just one percent of the tiny minority. You see that glamour. Oh, they show you, I don't want to mention them now. They show this young man in his uh, mansion. They show all the expensive cars. As we speak to you, Go and check out the car and legal dangote it is you'll be amazed. Warren Buffett has told us that he still drives the same old um, is it um, I don't know what they call that car in America now that he has been he has been using for the past how many years. So you can see that wealth attracting money is all about the law of attraction. You have to create that environment. So we want to be seeing how you can shift your mindset, you know, from a scarcity mentality. To a, an abundance um, mentality. So you have to reflect on your financial perspective. You have to look at your finances, your purpose. Why do you want money? You have to be clear. You're not just looking for money for the sake of money. Because money, like we have said, 
is not the root of evil, of all evil. They say it's even the love of money. But me, I've said yes, that it is the lack of money that is the root of all evil. Yes, because if you don't have money, you want to do things that are not human for you to create money. You have to adopt a positive money mindset. Your money mantra, like we said earlier, you have to be saying, yes, I am broke now, but I know that with universal laws, the law of attraction, I can do my work and attract money to come to me. And when this money comes to me, I'll be able to manage it, make use of it very well. You know, money is a neutral energy. And are you going to blame somebody who is playing with fire and that fire, you know, decide to consume the house? Will you say that, or maybe electricity, will you say that electricity is bad? No. Depends on how you make use of it. The same applies to money. Money is neutral. You can use money to impact your community. You can use money to impact the world. But at the same time, you can use money to sponsor wars. You can use money to buy arms and, and ammunition that can destroy this planet. So it is the usage of money that is the issue. So our money mantra should be, there is abundance all over the place. And I can see it. My financial future is secured. It's just for me to carry out certain principles of how to handle money. Then we need to shift our money mindset to save money. Because saving is a natural principle. So for you to shift that your mindset from scarcity to abundance. You see people who are, who are that scarcity mentality, when they have money like this, they are afraid to spend. They are afraid to spend the money. Ah, this money will finish, this money will finish. But if you have an abundance mentality, you spend that money judiciously, you invest the money, and the money comes back to you tenfold. We saw the biblical example of Christ that traveled, he said, Master traveled and gave those uh, his servant certain talents. We can say certain amount of money, depending on how you are going to use And when he came back, you can see the one that he gave, was it five, was able to turn it to ten. The one that he gave two was able to, you know, but the one that he gave one. Now I said, No, I kept it somewhere. And the master said, no, I'll take it from you. So you, he has a scarcity mentality. Why does that have to have an abundance mentality? So we need to begin to save money. For us to also shift our mindset, we need to monitor our spending. How do you feel when you spend money? Can you capture that feeling? How do you feel when you are being paid money? How do you feel when you pay your bills? So we need to come back and look at our relationship with money. Are we at peace with money? When you see your bills, you get irritated. Did you get annoyed? When, you know, somebody has done a good job for you, for you to even pay the person, you are feeling uneasy. These are things we have to look inwards ourselves. And, you know, money, like any other thing, when you welcome it very well, it will stay and multiply. But if you don't treat it very well, it will flee. Mm. What you just said, and I just sparked <laughs> off um, a conversation in my mind. I'm just going to share just a few seconds. Yeah. Someone did a job in my estate, and um, he came to ask for the money. You know, <laughs> I think uh, it, 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 what's, what's the thing called again? I think plumbing or something. Okay, plumbing, yes. And guess what? When he was supposed to go collect 7,500, yeah. the guy brought out a gun. And shot twice into the air. That uh, what? What is the issue? That is coming to ask for money. <laughs> so it just reminded me of this issue where you get someone who does a job for you, yes. and the, the the act of paying the person becomes an issue. Wait, the guy who did the job had the gun on him. No, the guy. Yeah, the guy decided to bring out the gun because he felt like he doesn't have that money to pay the guy for the job he's done. <laughs> oh my goodness! As you can see, and the uh, whole <laughs> environment was terrorized. Was terrorized. You can imagine. So that's our belief about money. That is how you feel when you are paying your bill. And you think that kind of person, money will be attracted to such a person? No. All it right. will not be. Then the last one, commit to changing your money habits. You have to change your money habits. Make money your friend. Take care of money. Money is so tender. Take care of money very well. When money comes to you, more will come to you. Hopefully, the next time we have you here, Charles, you tell us how to take care of money because th that would spark a lot of conversations exactly. on people's heads. But of course, uh, this is where we end it on today's, of course, edition, episode of 
personal finance with Charles. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Charles. Yes, before I go, if money talks, hmm. I need a hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> to hear. Oh my goodness, that was a good one. <laughs>